<laughs> we absolutely love it. And we are live. Good evening, people in recorded land of the fucking internet. Uh, we'll take a second while people kind of climb their way into the room and, and get all excited about this, because holy fuck, who do I have on the other side of me? I hate the fact that this thing goes the opposite way, whatever. Uh, for those who don't know, I'm Jason Greenberg. I write, well, I am a content creator for Bucket List Music Reviews, and I am joined with a very esteemed guest today um, with a career spanning well over 20 years now, one Brandon Saller of a trade. How are you doing today, man? I'm wonderful. How are you? Mm, everything is on fire. Um, I am fine. <laughs> We're all just trying to get through it. Um, <laughs> I mean, there's a there's a very obvious air of like what the fuck is our lives and everything like that right now. But um, obviously, you and the rest of the band have been very fucking active just these last couple of months, especially. Yeah. Um, give us a little bit of how you've been getting through COVID and how um, how all of this process has been for you so far. I mean, it's been it's been crazy. Obviously, like bit by bit, you start to see things sort of going back to what seems like it's going to be some sort of normal. Um, but it's been crazy times, obviously for us, you know, we went through some pretty, uh, extreme internal changes and, um, you know, had a lot of time to make an album and think about what we wanted to do next and, and, you know, properly plan how we wanted to go about that. So, you know, honestly, this, this time off has been a little bit of a blessing in disguise, I think for our band. Um, but now that it's like kind of peeking out the door of the other side, I feel like we're all. We're just excited. I think we're just anxiously yeah. waiting to do literally fucking anything. <laughs> I, I mean, especially with music videos like Warrior coming out, I imagine you're happy to do anything that isn't get beat the shit up out of the rest of your fucking Oh, that band. was a blast. That video was my idea, strangely enough. <laughs> and I'm not a masochist either. It's just I thought it would be a fun idea. It hurt more than I thought it would also, though. Well, yes, that's usually what having fake bottles broken over your head often end up. Uh, well, because fake what people might not know is that fake bottles break into a bunch of little tiny sharp pieces of sugar. Yeah. When you have a shaved head, those feel awesome. Mm -hmm. There's a great Mike Tyson quote and he says, everyone's got a plan to get punched in the face. And that was rang very true to me. Yeah. I had that this great plan, this great idea until people started punching me in the face. I was like, this is not as fun as I remember. I mean, I'm honestly, I'm veering off the path right now, but honestly, 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 I, I was watching it and I'm kind of like, oh, yeah, cool. It's a cool idea. That's definitely makeup. That's just and that. And then I think it was, uh, Travis when he actually fucking clocked you on and I saw your face shake. I'm like, oh no, he actually punched him in the face there. That yeah, wasn't, that. that's you not an that. effect. Like, I don't think these guys have the money for that much fucking CGI. Yeah. You saw uh, my cheeks wiggle. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh no. Okay. This is real. Um, how very, you know, Phil and Salmo, Andrew WK of you. It was uh, quite I'll impressive. Take that. High praise. High praise. Ooh. And I actually do genuinely mean it as high praise. Anything that sounds like sarcasm likely isn't. Um, I'm just an idiot. <laughs> uh, getting back on track uh, and talking as briefly as I can about this insane scenario that we're in. Um, how, what have you been listening to during COVID that's keeping you relatively sane? Um, it, it's a weird... Um... It's a weird thing, but I, I'm a dude who listens to my own music a lot because of the fact that I just make, I, I like making music that I want to hear that I haven't heard yet. Um, so we've been in the middle of making a record. I've probably listened to our new album more than I should have. Um, okay. As far as other bands, I've been loving a lot of the new Beartooth mm. music. Um, I got really into this band, the band Creeper last year. Oh, um, yeah. I Creeper's love good. them. Creeper's fun. Um, such a great record. Hell yeah. Um, I've been really into Dragged Under. I love oh, yeah, that yeah. band. Um, yeah, that's kind of been my, my constants. And then I have two daughters under the age of four. So I listen to a lot of Bubble Guppies, Disney music, and things of that nature. Never introduce them to me. I look like every Disney villain they've ever seen in their lives. <laughs> um, which is honestly something I make sure to tell all of my friends who are parents. Like, you, you, yeah. No, you don't want me to be scared. scared. They're going to be scared. <laughs> They're going to have nightmares and it's not yeah. going to be my fault. Um, <laughs> it's always my fault. Uh, so we mentioned it a couple of times. You got a brand new record coming out three fucking days away. We're going to continue to mention it repeatedly over the course of the next um, yes. now 20 ish minutes that we've got left. Uh, <laughs> Baptized comes out on Friday. Highly anticipated, high praise already behind it in terms of uh, your surrounding crowd of musicians that you guys typically keep yourselves involved with. Um, 
before we get specifically into the record, talk us through the transition and the process of, um, and I'm going to keep this conversation as minimal as possible for obvious reasons, but talk us through the transition of Alex leaving the band to um, what, what it was like writing and recording this record and doing so with a new lineup, with you being in a new position that you're already well familiar with, given your work with uh, Hell or High Water or American Gentleman and all that. What was that process like? I feel like it was luckily very comfortable because of the way it all went down. So we we, we started making this album in January um, with Alex. Um, we wrote about nine or ten songs, I think. Um, and then we came back from tour from Australia. Um, we decided to part ways. We went through that whole song and dance. And luckily, once the decision was made that I, I was going to move up front, we we're going to get a new drummer. Um, obviously we had our new drummer in mind, but we were like literally in the middle of going back into the studio to finish the album. So I ended up still playing drums on the whole album. And really it was more about writing a bunch of new songs, um, just the four of us. And then also going through and, and kind of not only re-recording a lot of vocals, but making them our own, like making them how I would sing them and how Porter would sing them. Um, you know, we, we incorporated literally everyone in the band, including Kyle, our new drummer's voice on the album, just to like really give some new dynamic. Because that's been a thing that I think that our band has always had um, as kind of a strong suit is the vocal dynamic between me, me like, like you know, singing and screaming and uh, multiple, multiple vocals. So we really wanted to keep that. Um, so, I mean, Porter's, Porter's singing a lot on the album, um, literally everyone in the band singing on the album. So. It was just kind of going in and adapting, but it felt great. So it wasn't like a super foreign, strange thing, mm -hmm. luckily, you know? Good. And I, as um, an old school fan myself, uh, my, my very first uh, Atreyu live performance, which was not my first time listening to you guys, was Taste of Chaos 2006, um, uh, right after, um, well, of course, I'm forgetting the name of the record. So that I'm just going to Death Grip on Yesterday. That was it. Um, I think that, that had just, just, just come out or was just coming out as that tour was going on. So um, I'm an old fan. I've enjoyed you for quite some time. Um, how far back into your catalog do you think you guys are going to go once you start booking up tours and start getting out on the road again? And how are those old songs sounding? We'll go all the way back. Um, there's yeah. not going to be anything missing from our band. Um, we, we actually we did a couple of live stream events. And we kind of played with this idea um, for one song each night of the live stream events where we did um, one of the songs on Lead Sales is like mostly screaming. And then we also did um, like, I, th I think it was lip. No, it wasn't lip gloss. It was Bleeding Mascara, um, which is like oh, yeah. mostly screaming. Um, Porter is going to be doing the lion chair of, of the heavier vocals. On the newer stuff, I have, you know, some some screaming that I'm doing, but it's mostly Porter. So we actually had me go back to drums, Porter front the band, and then Kyle play bass. Oh, wow. This little, okay. like, triangle switch. And it was super fun. And, like, Kyle's a good bass player, too. So, like, it all worked. So I think we might end up doing that a little bit live. But, um, you know, either way, like, we're not going to abandon – you can't abandon 20 years of – 20 plus years of history, like, and be like, we're only going to play stuff from Lead Sales on, like, that's never going to happen. Like we're always going to, you know, incorporate the same amount of, of our old catalog as we always have anyways, you know, that satisfies me deeply as I'm <laughs> sure it satisfies a great many of your fan base deeply. For sure. Um, and, uh, honestly, I, I, I am excited to see how the new iteration is going. I've, I've been doing a little, of course, building up to this being the, fantastic fucking interviewer that i am which is also a lie um i have been doing my homework and uh uh i'm excited this is, this is some interesting sounding stuff you guys come out since, since lead sales i think it's safe to say that you guys haven't stuck to a particular sound for longer than an album before dipping into something kind of diverse or trying to keep up with the times or whatever it is um yeah. would it be safe to say that you agree with that sentiment absolutely we're kind of always i mean we always want something new something fresh um mm -hmm. and just try not to, to keep it, you know, we still try not to keep it stale for ourselves. And I, I think if you really listen back, I mean, it, it goes all the way back to the first album. Like you listen to, to suicide notes, there's a lot more melody on the curse. There's a lot more guitar yeah. solos and kind of guitar work on that. Then you go to death grip, which has 
a little bit more of the rock element. You have lead sales that pushes that kind of idea even further. Um, you know, so I feel like we've always been that band that kind of just like ebbs and flows and pushes in different directions. Um, but I mean, I think that, you know, luckily for us, some of our favorite music we've made is also our fans' favorite music. And like, just speaking from a like purely numbers standpoint, like Lead Sales is our biggest album we have. And when we went away, when our, we went on hiatus, we came back and assumed that people would just like, oh, everyone wants us to go back to the old style and, and be heavy again and blah, blah. And I was like, well, let's check out what people are listening to. And you looked at our like, you know, top 20 songs on every streaming platform ever. And, you know, eight of them were lead sales, you know? And it was one of those things where it was like, oh shit. And it was like, well, that's kind of our favorite thing too. So, you know, we kind of, I think the root of our band, there's always going to be heavy. There's always going to be rock. There's always going to be a big pop chorus. There's always going to be guitar solos. Yeah, but there's 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 just going to be some some twists and turns along the way to keep it interesting. I mean, as much as I would love to see a return to the you know the skinny jeans and the and the black nail polish, I, I'm always happy to see maturity and diversity in any band. They just um, don't fit I, as good anymore, you know. Yeah, I mean, I'm with you there. <laughs> I've gained weight. Um, <laughs> speaking very much of the old shit, uh, I'm sure you've noticed, and of course, you guys formerly being one of like the quintessential part of my saying screamo bands or or you know hot topic bands of back in the day um have you been noticing this sort of revival or revisitation of that early 2000s nostalgia dragon and just fucking going you know the emo nights and the things like that have you been noticing it where do you stand on that i think it's cool like I, I've, I've talked about this before like i think that everything music is cyclical like it always comes back around you had that period of time where the 80s was cool again and you had like kids okay teasing their hair and wearing like, you know, acid wash jeans and then the nineties got cool again. And then what came next? Like the two thousands and emo was cool and emo night happened. And like, you go to the next extreme of that and you know, it's, it's the metal stuff. It's the hot topic genre. It's, it's heavier bands. So I think it all, it all makes sense that it's all happening. And I mean, I think it's cool because I think it's, we're a band that's very, you know, we've been very fortunate to kind of attain some relevance throughout the years where like we're always getting new fans and like kind of new people coming on board. But I think the resurgence of all this is almost just like reminding some of the old people that we exist still. There's a lot of people that were like, Oh dude, that was an emo night and heard lip gloss. And I was like, fuck, I haven't heard listen to a trade in forever. And then I realized that you were still a band and you had three records I hadn't heard. And now I'm at your show again. You know what I mean? It's like, it's doing that for us, which is, yeah. is really cool. And I mean the amount of the amount of physical revivals is causing on top of it. A lot of bands getting back together and going back on the tour. I, I'm just obviously a fucking slut for it. Um, I love it. Give me all of that shit. Uh, yeah. I, I'm enjoying it deeply, and <laughs> that of course leads me to speaking to the drummer of Betray You somehow at the ripe age of 32. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll move it along before I. I love it. I'm more of a fanboy. Um, you are indeed a man of a great, great, great many projects. Um, you yes. know, you've done Atreyu, you obviously for the last uh, 20 plus years. Uh, you've done Hell or High Water, which is where Kyle comes into the band. And you also have your project, American Gentleman, which I yeah. just discovered today, very specifically doing um, a massive deep dive through your social media for research purposes to find that you somehow did a promo video for the fucking Bachelor. So yeah. how did that happen, first of all? <laughs> so that's what that's what American Gentleman came from. Um, I started writing um, music for like TV film um, mm -hmm. six years ago. Um, and I signed with a company called Cobalt Music about four years ago, um, maybe a little bit longer. Um, but just writing music for, for commercials, promos, all that kind of stuff. And um, American Gentleman is me and a guy, Chris Umano. He goes by C4. Incredible kind of hip hop R and B producer, great writer. Um, and we, we've been writing for years now. So we, we created American gentleman as just kind of like a, something to put the name on, you know, like, Oh, if we're going to make all this music and it's getting used and all these things, might as well put it out, might as well make it a thing. And we played a show before. Um, but, but uh, it kind of just became this monster. I mean, it's, and it's ranged from, you know, the bachelor to Toyota commercials to ABC promos to freaking Right now, there's like a Twitter space thing. It, like there's, it's it's all over, all over the place. So it's one of those things. I, I call it glory free 
the glory free career because I, I mean I don't, but I could make ten million dollars a year and have songs over everywhere, but no one would ever know that it existed because it's just in the background when you're watching TV. <laughs> but uh, but it's super fun. I mean, as the second I, I I caught it and listened to it, I was like, oh yeah, no, that's definitely that's definitely Brandon. Mm -hmm. That's also definitely The Bachelor. Um, <laughs> I gotta ask, and don't you fucking lie to me now, because I'll know. Just how much of The Bachelor do you actually watch? Never watched an episode. I don't Never know, man. Watched. I'm trying to lie here. I don't know, dude. I can't. I would I would admit it. Like my favorite, I, I love romantic comedies on the Food Network. So there's no shame in my in my likes and dislikes for as far as television, but, or movies, but I've never, I've never been attracted to the bachelor. I've just never, never gotten into it. I watched like flavor of love and the Brett Michaels one back in the day, but I just yeah. never, gotten, I've never gotten to, to, to the bachelor. Mm. For uh, those who don't know, and I'm, I'm outing her fully right now. Um, my best friend, boss and Patriot, and also moderator of this whole lovely thing that we're doing right now. Uh, yes. Rock of love. If you can see in the fucking comments, yeah. um, Liz is a massive fan of these fucking things. And yep. she is the only person I've spent any time with during COVID. So guess who had to watch a bunch of episodes of rock of love and then watch his life get shorter. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's the end of that comment. Uh, yeah. We're going to be wrapping up my section in a moment. For anybody watching, if you have questions yourself you'd like to ask, I implore you to do so with the short amount of time that we still got left. I'm going to try and rip through this very fucking quickly. One thing that I, I absolutely adore to do with everybody that is stuck talking to me for these things um, is a little thing I like to call Battle of the Blank, where I make you pit um, two familiar, we'll say, characters in a fictional fight to the death, and you got to tell me which one wins. Genius. Um, we're going to do a, I because I get to be selfish here. It's my fucking interview, motherfucker. Um, <laughs> Battle of the Blank Taste of Chaos 2006 edition. Let's do it. All right. We only have two heats. I'm going to keep it super, super simple because the rest just didn't feel like they fucking fit. Um, who wins in a fight to do that? Silverstein or Story of the Year? Um, Silverstein. Because they're Canada boys. They're into hockey. That seems tough. They're into those cold winters. But story of the years from the Lou, which is a, is not is not a an easy place to grow up. But at the same time, I just don't. They're all just such like gentle, nice boys. I think Silverstein just got the edge. Everybody's just doing backflips and guitar swings and everything. No one's actually hitting each other. I think I think story of the year has more defensive moves, like the backflips and things like that. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, the 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 tempering of the cold weather of I think the um, cold weather in Canada, which I did, I might add. Yeah, the hockey disposition is 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 going to win that one for sure. Go Habs, go! Um, round two uh, of three, Thrice versus Dredge. <laughs> uh, I, I think in this fight, both bands just end up hugging each other. It's those both both those bands are the most like docile humans I've ever met in my life. Believe it or not, that's a significantly more common answer than you would think. Yeah, Thrice. I, I don't think anyone in Thrice has ever gotten a fight. Maybe someone in Dredge has gotten a fight. Maybe the Dino, the drummer, has gotten in a fight, but I don't see. They're all just so mellow. Like, there's so much. There's so much like on the dredge side. There's so much like red wine and weed involved, and then on the thrice side, there's just like acoustic guitar and skateboarding involved, where everyone's just too too busy being super chill to get in a fight. Well, I'm perfectly okay with that answer. Yeah. Um, instead of making a third heat, which I usually do, I have to ask: Was there a particular band on that tour that? for any reason whatsoever, just scared the crap out of you? Scared the crap out of me. You obviously being truly the biggest individual on the tour, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> yeah. comprised yeah. of every member of every band and all of their crew, as well yeah. as some of the cabs. I feel like, I feel like if it was anyone, it was, it was Deftones because it was like, they're like larger than life. You know what I mean? Where you're like, wow, it's Deftones. But then like, even they were like super cool, but, um, yeah, there was no scary people on that tour. Everyone was super nice, super friendly. I still love that answer. Yes. I was going to make you pit a bunch of fucking uh, Bachelor leads in a fight. To yeah, the death. Well, I'll and spare I you. I would be lying if I if I said anyone was a was a scary person. I'm going to catch you in the act, Brandon. I promise. <laughs> I'm going to fucking I'm going to patch into your fucking TV feeds, man. Right. Um, mm. That joke is now long dead. I got one last question for you. Everybody in the chat, if you got questions, start gearing them up, and we're going to get them up on the screen, and we're going to ask them. Uh, but 
with your illustrious, again, 20 plus year career, all the things you've done, all the places you've been, all the festivals, the albums, the fucking bachelor commercials, you fucking name it. Um, <laughs> what do you still have left on your bucket list, good sir? So much. We've never been to a lot of places. Um, we've never been to South America. We've never been to Russia. We've never been to a lot of places in Asia, like Asia or Eastern Europe. Um, we've never headlined arenas. We've never headlined festivals. Um, we've never had pyro. All things that will happen. All things that must. I'm surprised happen. to hear that last part. Yeah, I know. Never pyro. We're 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 smart boys with the penny. So we've just <laughs> never. We've just never spent. It's very expensive, guys. Um, it is. Yeah. It so is there's plenty. There's plenty. So we we have a lot a long list that we are are uh, eager to scratch off. All right. Well, can't wait to see them all fucking happen. Um, while we start to let some of the questions come in, I'll do some quick, quick, quick promos. Once again, everybody, Baptized comes out this coming Friday on the streaming platform of your fucking choosing, including the great pirate web. Please don't do that. People need to eat. Um, mm -hmm. we, uh, we here at Bucket List also have a couple of things of our own. This coming Monday is going to be another episode of Peaked in High School with our very own Justin Bruce, where we're going to be going over a very familiar album that is Discovering the Waterfront by uh, Silverstein. It's going to be fucking awesome. You should tune in. It's 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on the Bucket List Entertainment Facebook page, as well as on the Bucket List Entertainment Instagram if you really want to be a masochist. Um, otherwise, I am back again next Tuesday, once again at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I can't fucking believe I'm saying this, but I'm interviewing Melissa Cross of the Zen of Screaming and other vast. She's great. More. She's so great. Please tell her I said hello. I will. Um, I love her so I, I much. Still I kind so of. Much. A little bit of it still doesn't feel real. Like I, she's so cool. She's she's yeah. so nice. I uh, this is by no means a flex. It's probably the weirdest thing about me. I have her Buddha tattooed on my stomach. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, She'll love um, that. I'll I'll spare everyone in the chat from having to see it if they have not already seen it before. Um, because COVID wait. Uh, so tune back in next Tuesday, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on the Beckless Entertainment Facebook page. If you want to watch this interview again, if you're coming in late, we will be putting a recorded version up on our YouTube at Bucketless TV. And also check us out on all of the other socials. They're loosely referring to Bucketless Entertainment. Let's get some fucking questions going. What do we have, Lizard? All right. Brennan asks, how stoked are you to get back on the road? I am ready for my pit therapy. Dude, you have no, you have no idea. Um, we are more than ready. Um, we got some festivals already booked and lots of things coming, but you have you have no idea. I think that I think that the first like month of shows for Atreyu is just gonna be absolute fucking fireworks on stage just because we're all gonna be just trying not to cry and, and trying not to pee our pants of excitement. Just cry. Just cry yeah. and pee your pants. We should just cry. We do we do. <laughs> just just weeping while I sing. People Come on, be like, we'll man, this dude you. sucks. He just cries all the time. <laughs> What is this, AF5? Anyway. <laughs> Thank you. I used to love that band, too. All right. So we are smoked for shows. Uh, our very own Listen Period asked, if you had to pick one of your reputable musician pals to have their own Rock of Love show, who would it be and why? Damn. Who do you know that's not married, is a piece of shit, and wants to hook up with a stripper? Dude, no one anymore. Like, all <laughs> everyone's, everyone's grown-ups now. Like, all my friends are... Our grownups now. I, I got nobody. I, we have to get someone divorced, and you know, so fuck. Yeah, I don't know any like single scumbags anymore, unfortunately. I is that an is that an unfortunate thing? <laughs> yeah, they're fun to watch. You know, I guess so. Yeah, they're fun to they're, to 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 watch from afar. It's like if watching a, a car lesson, crash. You know, if there's gonna be a lesson to take away, a thousand percent, it should be at least keep one scumbag in your life. Right yeah, remember. yeah, because it's just funny to chuckle at. Yeah. Exactly. We all yeah. need it. Um, do we got anybody else? It is looking like a quiet one for us tonight. It's which okay. Is Those not are two really bad good things, which is just fine because it looks like you need to go anyway. Um, yeah, well, Karen does make at least a good comment. Cry and pee your pants at the same time. Just get it out all the way. That's talent. <laughs> to do both at the same time, that's pure talent. That is indeed pure talent. Um, I do know Alex also asked a question, but Alex, the unfortunate part is I asked that question. You should have logged in on time. Um, anybody else in the meantime, Brandon, before we start to wrap this up, do you have anything you want to plug before you go? Yeah, um, obviously the rec comes out Friday. Um, also on Friday, we are um, debuting our own Twitch channel. 
if you search oh, trade yeah. music on Twitch, Twitch TV dot, uh, Twitch TV slash trade music. Um, we're going to be doing a lot of um, rehearsal streams, drum streams, guitar streams, some gaming. Dan will probably play, build Legos. Um, a lot of fun stuff. So you can go check that out. And we're doing our first stream on Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific. And then um, tomorrow we're going to be on the Danny Wimmer Twitch as well, doing an acoustic performance, which will be the uh, first fucking world premiere for a tray you doing a, an acoustic performance. That's going to be fucking fun. Yeah. It's going to be a good time. So is that just going to be you, uh, Travis and Dan, or are you going to be All doing five of us. All five, All five. Wow. This is going to yeah. be fun. Yeah. All right. Excited. Beyond excited to see it. Um, for everybody watching, please tune into that. Uh, I thank you deeply, deeply, deeply for your time. I imagine you've got a band practice to get to to get ready for that. Um, so thanks again for coming out. And for everybody that is here, you are our lifeblood. You are the reason we keep going. Um, thank you again. And have yourselves a fucking amazing night. I appreciate you. Thank you for having me.